From cancer diagnosis to therapy management, lab science is critical in keeping people well in clinics and hospitals around the world. Bringing it all together, it's the 2021 AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo, and we are AACC TV. We're back at AACC 2021 for more on the very latest in clinical chemistry and laboratory science. Today, we've got some of the highlights from the opening of the Clinical Lab Expo. Stand by for more, and we'll be traveling the world again to see some of the great work done in diagnosing and treating disease. Today, we feature some of the labs working to find new approaches to cancer diagnosis and management. We'll find out how clinicians and labs have come together with new therapies to help people living with cystic fibrosis. And we'll stop by the AACC COVID-19 immunity study to find out why you should donate. Remember, you'll find us here at the Georgia World Congress Center, in select hotels, on the virtual platform, on the meeting app, and find us online. But first, let's head out to the expo floor where we caught some of the awards being handed out to this year's top exhibitors and heard what you're on the hunt for as the expo opens. ACC, I just want to thank you for being here and to acknowledge you with your Silver Supporter Award. We really appreciate the partnership with Siemens over these many years and look forward to many to come. Thank you. Siemens Health and Ears is proud to partner with the ACC. I'm the lead tech in the ED lab and also I just went to the Roche booth and I found some things that could really improve the workflow in our lab. So that, that's also why I'm here, find some workflow solutions for the ED lab. Abbott is always amazing, and I'm proud to be a distributor of Abbott in Peru. Our company uh, just launched uh, a 200 million beta, so I'm looking forward to just learning more, interacting more, um, getting our name out. We're just a three-year-old startup, so I'm just very excited to be part of the big dogs and you know, making sure that people can realize that we, automation is the way forward. A great start there as the Clinical Lab Expo gets underway. We are joined now by AACC Immediate Past President, Dr. David Grenache. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, Tara. It's a pleasure to be here. So talk to us about how the meeting is going so far and how it feels to be back in person. Oh, the meeting's going great so far. You know, uh, just really getting started. And uh, it's just so wonderful to be here in person, uh, reconnecting with friends and colleagues that I haven't been able to see in uh, almost two years. Uh, it, feels, it feels wonderful. So talk about some of the science that you've already seen on display here at the conference. Oh, there's, there's so much. Um, uh, I'm really particularly interested in looking at some uh, automation solutions for both large and small laboratories. Uh, so that's high on my list, and I've seen a sneak peek at some of that in there. The exhibitors are doing such a wonderful job coming up with new ways to identify and detect COVID-19. Uh, gosh, there's just, there's just a ton of it. Um, everything from um, new biomarker discovery to uh, solutions for all sorts of laboratories. And speak about some of the things that you've seen on the expo floor that get you really excited for the future. Well, you're absolutely right. This is the premier clinical laboratory meeting uh, in the world. And it's just so great to have everyone here back together again. I'm looking forward to more education at the scientific sessions and certainly time on the expo floor because I've, there's a lot to see and I've got a lot to learn. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. In the first of our features, looking at cancer diagnosis and therapies, let's go to South Korea, where GeneCast has developed a new liquid biopsy for early detection in cancer. GeneCast is a specialist in liquid biopsy based cancer diagnostics. Our vision is to make cancer a minor disease. To achieve this goal, we developed the earlier discriminating priming system. ADPS, a brand new liquid biopsy technology that can precisely analyze more ctDNA in blood. ADPS can analyze the cancer gene of 0.01% of 
of a mutant or real fraction patient with a false positive. In a lung cancer, there are many different kinds of ribonucleogen mutations. That means we have different targeting agents against different genetic drive oncogen mutation. That's why this kind of oncogen-based PCR detection method will be the very useful method using the liquid, just like blood, in the near future. Coming up, an interview looking at new therapies changing the lives of people living with cystic fibrosis. But first, let's go to Mamagen, a company working to improve the detection, diagnosis, and treatment of women's health-related disease. Detect earlier, diagnose easier, treat better. For all women from end to never end. Mamagen is a company designed to be for women, led by women, about women. We are starting with early detection breast cancer because it's a really defined, unmet clinical need. So we're really trying to rule more of the right women in earlier and rule more of the wrong women out. Now what's different about the way we're doing it is just a simple blood draw. That makes it a lot more accurate and a lot more predictive of the actual risk. So that's what makes Mamagen unique. The secondary part of that is the fact that they are using RNA. So by looking at RNA, we get immediate, real-time, early information for these women. We started with the data, we started with the science, and then we built the company out from there. Every decision we make at Mamagen has a patient in mind because ultimately, the second I lose sight of that, the second I can't make Mamagen into the powerhouse diagnostic company that I know we're gonna be. Recent developments in therapies for cystic fibrosis have changed the lives of patients around the world. On Tuesday, a session told the story of those behind the scenes as well as those living with the disease. Joining me now virtually are Bonnie Ramsey and Kaylee Motch. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So for those who don't know, what is cystic fibrosis and what does it mean for those living with it? Um, cystic fibrosis is a progressive genetic disorder that affects the lungs and digestive system. Um, it was a chronic illness that was fatal back in the day, but now with advances in medication, we're seeing a lot of progress in CF. So it's, it's come a long way. Bonnie, what is CFTR and how has it changed the understanding of the disease? CFTR is a cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator protein, uh, and it is a salt channel that sits in the uh, lining cells of many organs, including the pancreas and the lungs. And we now know that mutations of the CFTR gene causes abnormal salt movement in this protein results in thick uh, mucus secretions from the lungs and pancreas, and that leads to organ um, destruction. And how has this led to new therapies? Well, our understanding of both the protein and the gene, which started in 1989 when, when the gene was identified, has allowed us to uh, screen for small molecules that could either uh, correct the trafficking of the protein to the surface or open up that chloride channel. And as a result of that screening, several very important drugs, which are called modulators, have been developed. What impact has this had on you? Um, gosh, so much. I have been a part of many trials and research studies um, with my cystic fibrosis and the newest drug is by far the only one that's actually worked for me. Um, it has completely changed my life. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Let's go to Agendia now, who are offering breast cancer patients the testing needed for a more personalized treatment approach.
Agendia's focus at the end of the day is to help find the right treatment for the right woman at the right time, all to improve outcomes for that individual patient. Children tolerate COVID infection very well, which is quite a relief for the pediatricians and the families of uh, our patients. But it became clear very early last spring that there's a subset of children who, after experiencing their primary COVID infection, about four to six weeks later develop a very significant, potentially life-threatening inflammatory disorder. That is what has been termed multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. We were prepared right from the beginning because of uh, its initial onset in uh, the UK. And so by the time we saw our first case, we prepped the lab and we were ready to help. We actually had the antibody test validated and ready to go for them when the patients hit the hospital with MISC. In our large cohort, which is just hitting 200 patients at this time, uh, we've had excellent outcomes with our treatment approach, which is based on an understanding of the hyperinflammatory state in the patients, which are measurable things that we utilize our laboratory tools to identify. Look forward to seeing you all at the symposium. You're going to learn all of the new information that we've gathered over the last one year from the different laboratories on MISC. Now to Archer DX. They're providing testing services in cancer for disease risk, therapy optimization, and personalized cancer monitoring. We are aiming to create a world in which genetics are used to help guide cancer therapy. And we believe this is really important because at this current time, these powerful targeted therapies are underutilized. Our anchored multiplex PCR AMP chemistry is, is different in the sense that it allows us to solve some of the most complex genomic problems. Really, it starts with our molecular barcoding strategy. And so this is a method in which we can associate or tag every starting molecule with a, a unique molecular identifier. And that allows us to track that molecule all the way through the, the library preparation and sequencing process. We believe that AMP is a transformational innovation because of its ability to detect not only simple, but also complex mutations accurately. We believe that we're going to make a significant improvement in the use of precision oncology. As we've seen, lab science has been at the forefront of COVID response, and AACC is working to further our knowledge about immunity and vaccine response with the AACC COVID-19 Immunity Study. This study involves collecting samples from our participants of the conference, and we will study the uh, serology antibody profiles and also T-cell immunity status. It's a great opportunity to have a diverse group of samples to actually look at the immunology functions of different people and patients and vaccines that are used and distributed across the world. My passion for this project uh, really comes out of the fact that we know so little about uh, what happens here forward with COVID. For example, we know vaccines were such a wonderful thing to have available, but we don't really know how long they're gonna last, which ones are actually gonna need to have boosters and which ones may not be. We need to learn a lot more about so-called neutralizing antibodies. We have a great deal to learn about this, uh, this disease and these antibody tests that this project will be a big contribution. I just couldn't, um, I, as a scientist, I just couldn't resist getting uh, as involved as I could in this activity for that reason. It's really important, I think, for the laboratory medicine community to get involved with this study because we're attempting to answer questions on a really large scale that haven't been addressed about how long do people have immunity after the COVID-19 vaccines. This study is important, and I would say personally, is it's an opportunity for individuals in 
the healthcare field who participate in this study to also communicate information to maybe their family or friends who may not be in the healthcare field in order to disseminate accurate information and also for those who may have um, immunization hesitancy maybe that this would you know be that catalyst to um, hopefully get vaccinated this is very safe you know, we, we did a lot of precautions or, or you know, uh, spent a lot of time to make the plans for the study. Um, you know, the, the, it's, it's gone through RB approval, so we, we strictly following the protocol. So it's very, uh, the privacy is completely protected. After people giving blood and samples, we see everything turn into a number. There's no, you know, connection anywhere. Um, you know, that's actually, you know, very safe, very, very, very private, and you know, very, you know, we're following all the HIPAA regulations. For individuals who may be hesitant, in participating. I think that it's a good opportunity and these individuals will also receive information um, in regards to their immunity. So overall, I think everyone should just do it. <laughs> make sure to head down and make a donation before the meeting is up. That's it from us today. Don't forget to come back tomorrow, though, as we discuss documenting research during the chaos of the pandemic with Holden Thorpe and catch up with the immediate past president and president one more time. Until then, you'll find us here at the Georgia World Congress Center, in select hotels, on the virtual platform, on the meeting app, and find us online. Goodbye for now. <laughs>